All right. All right. Well, I am here with Head Ned from Oakley Doakley. I am so excited to be speaking with you. How much of a whirlwind has everything been for you guys? Oh, um, definitely a big one. Like, it, it was weird. We started Oakley Doakley as something that we thought would just be like a couple strange bar shows, and, and the fact that we've got any attention at all. Um, and that we're, you know, on tour right now is just amazing. We're, we're humbled. From the get-go, did you ever see it, like, morphing into what it's become? Uh, no, absolutely not. Like, we, we thought that this would be something that we would be, like, in those eight metal band shows and down at the bottom in a font that you can't read at all. It says Oakley Doakley. <laughs> and people there at the show show up and go, like, what was that? So, yeah, the fact that we're, you know, here on tour and that we got any attention at all what we did, it's, it's been amazing. That's awesome. So can you tell me about the album creation process and how, like, that came together? Because I think, like, White Wine Spritzer is freaking hysterical and, like, everything else has just been great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, one of the first band purchases we made was all the existing DVD copies of the show. Uh, and... We just used that, we sat down and um, did some research on the internet, found some quotes that we wanted, went and dug through, got the CD, watched it, and once I had just like pages of quotes, I'd go through and start on the guitar, kind of play some riffs, add quotes to things, and from there it, it turned into an entire record. That's amazing. So how much is left over? Uh, so we had a couple, a couple leftover songs. We do still play them live. There's a really 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 grindy song called purple drapes um that uh we, we usually play it live we'll work on a live version of that um and then we've also got some new stuff that we've been working on so our live show kind of brings some of the new stuff and some of the things that didn't quite make how doodly doodly is it ever surprising to you which songs fans gravitate towards that you like have a feeling about one or the other and they're like no we like this one yeah, absolutely. Uh, with White Wine Spritzer, we did the video for that one. I, I really liked that song just right off the bat, and so that one wasn't surprising. But uh, Godspeed Little Doodle, that one seems to be a fan favorite, and that's so weird to me because that's like the longest song on our album. That's the long one. Like, that's what I thought when I went to write that song. I was like, I'm going to write the long one. Like This will be the long one on the album. And yeah, the fact that fans gravitate towards it and... Godspeed Little Doodle has become kind of a requested one. Yeah, that was, I didn't call that. Did I read that you actually filmed the video like right down the street from a nuclear power plant? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It was, we were good like 50 miles from it. Right. Okay, that's close enough. Though. Yeah, because yeah, we, uh, it was right near the uh, Palo Verde nuclear plant. We wanted to do initially the video with the power plant in the background. But after driving out to scout the area and seeing the sirens everywhere and, you know, kind of not wanting a helicopter, an FBI helicopter to land in your set, um, as cool as that would be, getting arrested, not so much. So we kind of went the other direction down the road and ended up about like 50 miles or so from it. I have to admit, though, seeing a bunch of Neds in handcuffs, like after then, that would be a pretty humorous sight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they... Uh, yeah, I don't know what those, uh, what the FBI would, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be weird. Absolutely. So I love that you guys have kind of created your own genre of metal with, with Nagel music. How would you even describe that to someone that was like, hey, this is, I just read that word and I have no idea what it is. Yeah. Well, first I'll start with the question, like, have you seen The Simpsons? And their answer to that question really will dictate where the conversation goes because if it's a no then explaining the band is incredibly difficult and generally i give up there i just go like oh well we play hard rock and i'll, I'll you know note that but um yeah if they've seen the show i just say like uh it's it's ned flanders and every kind of music that he isn't and it's crammed into one um uh, nettle is the best term we've had for it it's just heavy Brutalino and very Flanders influenced. Absolutely. Well, I think Ned Flanders always had an inner rage that was never tapped into. I think you guys found it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hurricane Nettie is one of my favorite episodes. And that's the one where he like explodes at the whole town. He goes to a mental hospital and stuff like that. 
that episode is is a good backstory to what Oakley Dokley is in a way. How did you guys decide to form the band and do this? I mean, were you big Simpsons fans before, or was it kind of just you know an idea that was like, hey, I think this is what we should do? I think it was just this perfect storm of like I've been watching. I grew up with the Simpsons. I've been watching it. So is my drummer. Um, and so we, we kind of came up with the idea. We thought we got far enough that like, yeah, let's do this. And then got some friends of ours to join in. Uh, we just wanted to do it for fun. Um, and having it be Simpsons themed was cool to me. I like, I'm a huge fan of the show. So being able to do something that, you know, it maybe honors that or is part of that was very fun. I mean, you guys have been featured everywhere lately. I mean, from publications like Maxim and Playboy, Variety. Have you ever have you gotten any feedback from any of the Simpsons creators or anything like that? Very, very early on when we first kind of released our press photos and we had that first bit of like virality, um, we had somebody who said they worked for Matt Groening. Uh, they contacted us and said like, "Hey, what you're doing is cool," um, but we didn't hear anything after that. Um, also, we were a little afraid that working for Matt Grinding meant maybe in the legal department. Um, but then we also had uh, somebody tweeted to Al Jean and sent a picture of us. And Al Jean responded and he said something along the lines of, they're Oakley Doakley with me, but I don't think Ned would approve of all that chin hair. Talking about our, our bearded drummer, we just say he has extra mustache. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all that we've had from the Simpsons ca camp, which, if, you know, we were expecting a cease and desist letter in the mail like a week in, but so far it's been great. That's awesome. I think they're totally cool people, and I think they're totally cool with the creativity. I had worried for Max Sabbath myself. I was like, how are they getting away with this? Yeah, Max Sabbath, they're, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they use a little bit more from the, uh, from the original thing. I, I guess with us, too, like, we, everything that we do is, we don't take any, like, we don't buy any Simpsons memorabilia and convert it. Everything we do is made from scratch and handmade and all our art's done and it's all like we're not pulling anything directly from the show. So I think that helps. And also the fact that like a lot of fans of us are Simpsons fans too. So like I, and I think, you know, we're not like making fun of the Simpsons in any way. We're just we've created this entirely like alternate a, a fan fiction of sorts in the form of a musical act. Absolutely, it's amazing. I saw that you guys are doing one of the Comic Cons, right? Yeah. Coming up. Yeah, the Montreal Comic Con. So we're excited to be at that. We'll be. You guys need to go to San Diego. Yeah, it, it's next. We do one end of the continent and then the other end of the continent. Yeah, we're excited for that. We'll be doing a performance and then we'll be in a panel too. Oh, that's amazing. What kind of panel? I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm pretty sure they'll just we'll get a table and one of those cool water bottles and maybe a little <laughs> plaque that'll just have Ned on it five times, <laughs> and uh, yeah, answer some questions and uh, just kind of hang out with you know the neighborinos. That's awesome. What's it been like to watch the fan base grow? Because I I could just really see people too at that con circuit getting into it. It's been great. Yeah, like we we try and do a lot of you know references to the show and kind of step it up for our live shows. Uh, we've made a t-shirt cannon that we fire and, you know, reverence of mod and we have an inflatable donut that we throw out. So, um, yeah, and there's just like tons of like I try and focus on like the cities and things where I am and, and make it, you know, fun for the fans. And, and the fan response has been great. Like uh, people are uh, I get to see all the coolest Simpsons tattoos um, and all of the coolest Simpsons shirts and things. It's like being on the front line of this, you know. You know, fan base of a show you really enjoy which is really fun. It's awesome too I love that you guys are having fun with it too because a lot of time you go out to a metal show and it's it's you know it's a lot of fun and it's it's very aggressive but like it's you know you guys keep the humor element alive and it's fun and it's entertaining and that's super cool. Oh yeah yeah absolutely we try and keep it like try and bounce and, and be on both ends of the spectrum of you know very aggressive and brutal but at the same time you know humorous friendly um, you know most of our stuff is pink and green, you know, rather than the standard black yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. So. That's awesome. 
So what is the rest of 2017 hold in store for you guys? I mean, I know you've got the con thing coming up and everything. I'm sure there's more touring and there's maybe talk of like a second album, maybe. Yeah, we did tentatively and mostly as a joke, we've been calling it Howdly Toodly. But um, yeah, we're doing the Montreal Comic Con tour and then we'll be back home for a bit. Uh, and yeah, we've got some new songs that we've been playing. Um, and we're going to work on developing a few more new ones and getting into the studio maybe later this year so that 2018 we can do some more touring and uh, maybe kick out Howdly Toodly. It's going to be amazing. We absolutely can't wait. And one of our sister publications is ageofthenerd.com. So I have a fun question for you from there. What is something that you nerd out about? I think that I might know the answer, <laughs> but what is something that you nerd out about? Oh, geez, that's tough. There's many things. I've been to the Phoenix Comic Con for the last, like, four years or so. Um, oh, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of really good pop culture stuff. I mean... The Simpsons is an easy one. Like, uh, every time I see Ned Flanders on the TV, it's, you know, I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, I know him very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I mean, I'm, you know, in the same vein, I am a huge Futurama fan as well. Uh, extra big on that front. They, uh, I've, you know, bought every copy of that one, and I don't even have to watch the episodes for a band. Um, and, yeah, the, the Futurama thing of my truck's always been covered in Futurama stickers and things. So, yeah, that's that's my, you know, kind of guilty pleasure, too, is the, you know, despite being in a Simpsons band, I'm a huge fan of the other show as well. So, yeah. That's, yeah that's it. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out to speak with me. I appreciate it. We very much look forward to the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.